Elise Stefanik not only has a race of her own, but she's also working hard to win back the House where she would serve in a leadership position as the Republican Conference Chair. Welcome back, Congresswoman Stefanik. Thank you for joining us. We have a month to go. Where do you think things stand? Well, we have 30 days and there's so much at stake this election cycle. When I travel around my district in upstate New York, we hear from voters about historic inflation, gas prices and home heating bills continuing to increase since Joe Biden took office. We hear of the crime crisis in New York state. And of course, there's breaking news about shootings that occur just outside of our gubernatorial Republican nominee, Lee Zeldin, who's a colleague of mine in Congress. And then, of course, the border crisis. Republicans are in a, a once in a generation opportunity to win the largest majority since the Great Depression. If we pick up 35 seats, we will make history, Trey. And I'm so excited. We have the most talented, recruited class of candidates who will be the most diverse group of newly elected members of Congress who are Republicans ever in our nation's history. All right, Congresswoman, you and I sat beside each other on committee and on the floor. So you know how cynical I am. And that cynicism uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question rooted in that. So House Republicans unveiled their commitment to America recently. But Joe Biden's going to be in the White House until January 2025, no matter what. So what's a realistic way to balance? This is what we want to do legislatively, but we don't have a president that's going to sign what we want to do. Well, first of all, the commitment to America is focused on four major pillars. We want an economy that's strong, a nation that's safe, a future that's built upon freedom, and a government that's accountable. When it comes to the economic issues, stopping the trillions and trillions of wasteful, reckless spending that have fueled this inflation crisis, Republicans will do that immediately when we earn back the House. We have to work hard to make sure that we earn back the Senate as well. And it's going to be our job to send as much legislation as possible to President Joe Biden desk. He will make the decision whether he signs it or vetoes it. You know, I hope that he will work with Republicans, but that's up to him. Republicans are going to fight on behalf of the American people to help save America, to focus on economic issues, to rein in the spending that's driving our inflation, to unleash American energy independence, to lower the price of gas, energy, home heating bills. So there's a lot that the average American family is concerned about. Republicans have solutions and legislation ready to move in the first hundred days. All right, Congresswoman, you had a bird's eye view when the Democrats took the House, their investigative strategy, if that's the right word. Two impeachments, the Russia, you were on the Intelligence Committee, still are when they were investigating Russia. How do you balance legislation with investigations? Because you are going to have members of your own conference that that want to investigate lots and lots and lots of things. How do you balance it? Well, you have to do both, Trey. And one of the major roles of Congress is our oversight capacity and having a government that's accountable. So when it comes to the border crisis, for example, really making sure that we call Secretary Mayorkas under oath and hold him accountable for their failures to secure the southern border, for their failure to respect the rule of law. There's a lot of investigations that need to happen because the American people deserve transparency. I'm working on a very local issue. There was a deadly limousine crash in Schoharie County in upstate New York, and it turns out the owner of that company was a longtime FBI informant. It's Congress's role to make sure that we have transparency and oversight over these agencies that, frankly, have completely run wild and think they do not report to the American people. They work for the American people and Congress's job through the power of the purse and through investigations. That's going to be an important part of making sure that we truly have a government that's accountable. Before I let you go, I want to ask you for an update on Lee, if there is more information. The last I read, he's OK, his wife's OK, his daughters are OK. But what's the latest on the incident at, at Congress? Lee Zeldin's home. Well, we are so grateful and thankful that his twin daughters, who are 16 years old, Michaela and Ariana, are safe. They did the right thing and acted immediately, calling 911. Lee and his wonderful wife, Diana, uh, were marching in a Columbus Day parade in the Bronx. So they were away from home. And the two girls were doing their homework on the first floor. Uh, We are glad that the Zeldin family is safe. But it is a crime crisis in New York state. And it shows up on your doorstep, literally, in the case of our Republican gubernator gubernatorial candidate, which is why we need to vote to turn out and save New York by electing Lee Zeldin this November. 
It's hard to imagine two young girls doing their homework on a Sunday afternoon and they have to wind up uh, calling 911.